I wasn't going to do this video, but here I am. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a little bit of an update where I've been for the last few months. I wasn't going to do this video because I thought A, it was going to be too emotional for me and B, I just thought it was a little bit naff. I've been thinking a lot about it and I think for me to move forward and put further videos out on my channel, I felt as if I should kind of give you an update of why I haven't been present on YouTube. So those of you that have followed me on Instagram, you'll probably know, but I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. My precious, beautiful husband. I'm not gonna cry. But my precious, beautiful husband, John, passed away on the 31st of March. He'd been in hospital and he hadn't, he wasn't, hadn't been very well and he got an infection, he got sepsis and just when we thought we were cracking the infection, the antibiotics gave him another infection. So he had two infections going on and he just couldn't fight them both and sadly passed away. Fortunately I was there, fortunately or unfortunately, whichever way you want to look at it, fortunately I was there with him and our three children and we stayed with him through the night and he peacefully passed away on the 31st of March and my world just literally changed in the blink of an eye. My whole world, because John was my whole world. I've been married for him 38 years, but known him for 40. I've only ever known John. He's the only man that's ever been in my life. And I've never lived on my own. So I've moved from home, my mum and dad, moved in with John, got married. So I've never lived on my own. So my whole world completely changed. Heartbroken, yet. Yeah. I'm totally heartbroken. Never ever gonna be the same person ever again. And I've just been trying to come to terms with him not being around, but it's, I can only get through each day, one day at a time. And I just thought the purpose of this video, as I said, I didn't really wanna do it because I just thought it was a little bit naff to be honest, me sat here and, but I just thought it may help somebody else out there who, who who's going through a similar situation you also feel like i do totally lost empty and i just thought maybe it might give you some comfort or make you feel like you're not alone i have just literally i want to be a recluse to be fair i just want to hide away from the world and just hide away from the world i've looked at buying a cottage on the isle of sky because that's how i feel just to live in the middle of nowhere, with me and my three cats overlooking a lock in the Isle of Skye. But wh what would that get me St on my own? I'd still be on my own, but on the Isle of Skye, and I'd still feel heartbroken. And it, it was, obviously I wasn't gonna go and move to the Isle of Skye, but it was just how I felt. I just feel as if I just wanna lock the doors and not be part of the world again. And, I still feel that, I still feel that now. He's been gone 13 weeks and I'm only 57. I've got hopefully another 30, at least 30 years of my life and John would not want me to hide away and not do all the things that I would love to do and he would love for me to do. It's very hard though because saying it and doing it is two different things and I've cared for him for 18 years, 18 years, and I've loved every minute of it. I just found it an absolute privilege to care for him. He was my husband, and when I married him, I said in sickness and in health, and I met every single word, and I was only young, really, if you think about it. I was 19, and when I made those, I commit, you know, said those words of commitment, I hadn't got a clue, but I knew he was the man for me, and he would have looked after me if he would shoes on the other foot. I gave up my career to look after him and care for him and I don't regret for one minute. Yeah, I missed my job, but I don't regret that decision. And yeah, it was just, I, I mean, I've been so lucky to, to spend every day with him, every single day with him, 24 hours a day. 
he might not have felt the same mind. For 18 years, we've just been this little cocoon and, well, yeah, I mean, I think we had a really, really special relationship as well because obviously there's a 20 years difference between us and I think that was one of the reasons our marriage was so strong because we had our, diff you know, I, I had a different outlook on life to his outlook on life. He's had 20 years of life longer than me and we never expected anything from each other. I didn't expect him to like all my pop groups and he didn't expect me to like the shadows and all the music that he liked, for example. We just, that's what he liked, that's what I liked. I loved the fact that he liked those things and he loved the fact that I liked my things. So we never expected to fit in or anything like that to each other. We just, we just accepted, we just accepted, we just loved each other so much and we never argued, very rarely had any, if we did have any arguments, they would be short, short arguments and they were usually generally over the kids when the kids were growing older, you know, who was going to discipline them and that's the only time we would ever argue, we never argued over anything. He was, he literally spoiled me. I was so, so lucky, he gave me anything. I, I, I had to watch what I, I say to him because I'd say, oh, that's, oh, look at that diamond ring. And he would go, come on then, let's go and have a look. Or, can we go to the Maldives? Yeah, come on, let's book a holiday to the Maldives. Or, oh, I've seen a new dress I like. Go on then, go and get that dress. Oh, he never ever said to me, you know, you can't have it, why do you, never. Never, he was just, I was just so, I was such, so lucky and he's not here anymore and, and it's just so hard to get through each day because he's, he's just not here and he was my life absolute life but obviously i've got my we've got our three children and obviously they're grieving for losing the dad but thankfully i've got my mum and dad who are two doors down and they're there and i see them every morning and you generally cry there every morning and my dad was got quite upset watching me cry so i've stopped crying when i go to see them on the morning i try to look a look a little bit happier for them uh, but it, that's just all the lights are on and there's no one home really that's how I'm that's how I, I class myself at the minute you so you may see me on Instagram you miss you'll see me you know doing the things but I'm just getting through each day so the lights are on but I'm not really I'm not really home people say to me oh you'll get there where will I get I appreciate the, the words I think the comforting words and the kindness but no, that, that, those words don't really help me. Where will I get? I won't get anywhere. I want to be with John. That's where I want to be and I won't get there. But, yeah, um, and everybody's grief is different. Yeah, you can't compare. You can't compare the grief and yeah. So every day I get up and every day I say, I've got a picture of him by the side of my bed and I say, another day without you, without you darling and get through the day and then when I go to bed I say well another day has gone without you darling that's how each day is for me at one point though I was thinking I just can't I'm not going to do anything I'm just going to sit and do nothing and just turn into a, an empty shell but I just thought John would absolutely go mad with me for doing that and he, he just he would be so annoyed with me he would say go and get it go and do it go and get go and do your jobs, go and do what you've got to do, get your pattern, what, whatever. And I just thought, yeah, I can't, I can't, I, I just can't not do that. So slowly over the last few weeks, I have been working on my sewing designs and my sewing patterns and they, it has helped me fill in my days because my days were just so long, they still are long and so empty. But by sitting and working on my patterns and you know grading and designing and doing samples and sewing the day the hours literally fly by so that's that's what I've been doing the last few weeks I've been throwing myself into all my sewing again and it's certainly helping me and that's the way forward for me for me to get through the days and the weeks I have a Patreon, my Patreon page, I put that on hold for a couple of months and all my patrons were just so, so lovely and so patient. 
understood completely but my patron is now up and running again and I'm thoroughly enjoying making creative content for my subscribers there and designing exclusive only patterns this this is this is actually one of them the swing top and they're loving that and yeah that's really definitely giving me some kind of drive and direction to you know keep on producing the content because my patrons you know pay they subscribe they pay to watch me and create which is such a lovely feeling it just makes me think oh people actually want you know want to watch me and prepared to give me their money to to watch me and be creative and that's all that's just really is giving me the drive and if, you, if you'd like to join me i'll put the link in the box below and there's all different subscription levels obviously my sewing patterns my latest sewing pattern launched yesterday as i'm filming this on the 30th of june uh, the sadie skirt my lovely airline skirt i'm so thrilled with that and that i'm dedicating to john because i started that when john was still alive and he loved it he loved me wearing the few versions that i'd made and he said oh that's such a pretty skirt you look lovely give us a twirl he used to say give me a twirl and i thought well, i'm gonna finish i wasn't gonna finish it but i thought yeah i'm gonna finish the pattern so i've just finished it and it's launched and it sold really well last night on launch night and john will be up there now going yeah well done well done so and I'm smiling so if I'm smiling it must be a good thing so that's what I'm going to do I've got to fill my days in I don't go to work I don't work I don't you know I don't go to work I need to do something to fill my time in I'd, I just thought I'd explain to you I didn't want this to be a doom and gloom and depressing video but obviously the sheer nature of the video it's got to be kind of that way but I just wanted to explain to you where 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 I'd, where I'd be how I am I'm okay I'm okay I'm just not okay, if you know what I mean. And I'm just figuring out what my purpose is in life and what my role is in life. What am I gonna do for the next 30 odd years? What direction am I going in? Um, so that's what I'm trying to figure out. How to be on my own, to live on my own. Obviously, I've never ever lived on my own. So, you know, going for food shopping, that is depressing as hell. I hate that task. I hated that task before. I hate it even more now because I go into the supermarket, get my trolley and buying food for one is so depressing. I always cry, I always cry when I go to get the groceries. That's something I've got to work on. So I'm working on that. I'm going to try and do things that I've never done before. Try new things, do different things. And if I don't like it, then at least I've tried it and then tick it off the list. I've joined a book club at my local library where we meet on the last Friday of every month. You read a book, you discuss it. So I went to that yesterday, my very first, and I was gonna just cancel. I just thought, no, I can't do it. And then I thought, if I keep canceling everything, then how will I ever know? And I hadn't finished the book. I'd only read like three chapters of the book. I thought, no, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna say it when I get there. Well, I haven't read the book, but here I am. And I'm glad I did. And I'm glad I did because it was just for an hour and it was quite pleasant. And I've also joined my local gym. So my physio recommended I maybe do some gentle exercises and also will help me fill my days. And so I've joined the gym and I've got some Pilates and some yoga classes that I'm going to try next week. I'm trying to do something. I'm going to try and force myself to do things. I, I, I'm going to try and go out of my comfort zone. I'm going to try and get out of this headspace that I'm in where I don't want to do anything. I don't want to sing at anyone. And I don't particularly want to talk to anyone. I can't go on like this for the rest of my life. But I haven't got a clue. That's what I'm trying to say, rambling here. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> so I'm just trying to fathom it all out. I've been in my garden, I've been doing my garden, and my garden looks absolutely amazing and gorgeous, but even doing that was half-hearted. I do pick up a few weeds, and then I'd have to go, go and do something. I couldn't like concentrate for long. So, yeah, it's been really, really hard.
So that's where I've been. I'm going to go straight on to my next design next week. I'm just, just going to keep on going. I'm just going to keep on doing the things that gets me through each day. I'm just going to keep on dedicating everything that I do to John. And that's what's going to drive me. And he's going to be so proud of me. And I know he would have been absolutely thrilled last night with everybody ordering the Sadie skirt sewing pattern. It was like a brilliant launch night. Thank you to all, if you have ordered the pattern, thank you so much for your support onwards and upwards onwards and upwards and if you'd like to join me over on patreon for exclusive creative content and exclusive sewing patterns that you won't get anywhere else then i would love for you to support me and join me there uh, i really do enjoy my patreon so yeah so thank you so much for listening to me and i'll see you on my next video yes and yeah, bye for now.